I apologize for that. Our chip uh, actually was filled and we had to change uh, and go to another one. But uh, we're here at the part of our cup runneth over. And boy, how truly that has to be for all of us that know the Lord. But the, one of the most exciting things is surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. The conclusion of goodness and mercy following us is us dwelling in the house of the Lord and that's forever. Now, all oh, friends, see, this makes me uh, raise a question. And actually, it's this question that I was wanting to get to all day. You see, the question that I've got to ask is, what's following you? Yes, I've got to ask that. What is following you? The truth is, we as sheep and a body of believers, we are following our shepherd, the Lord Jesus himself. But the fact is, we have, for us, we have two fellows following us from behind kind of taking care of all of our old business of where we come from. Their names are goodness and mercy. And all oh, these are good to know that we have these right here behind us. It should inspire us. And literally first to ask the question, what are you living with? What is following you? You know, we all have things of our past. There's all those things of our past does in fact follow us. So as I ask the question, what's following you? It, we need uh, to, to really realize how important this question is for us that are saved. You know, do we live that grace and mercy and those things that's called the goodness of God, are they literally following us? Is that what behind us? Is that what we know that's there? Is that our past? Boy, I pray it be. Because literally, that's what the psalmist says. He says, goodness and mercy is following us all the days of our lives. You see, if we know who's follow what's following us, well, then surely it can provide grace and comfort, or yes, peace and comfort. And uh, it's a great peaceful thought to me to think of goodness and mercies just following me wherever I've been and wherever I'm going. It gives me hope for where I'm going in the future. And the key ceases my worry. I don't need to worry about nothing because the honest truth is goodness, God's goodness, and oh my goodness, mercy. God never given me what I deserve. Yeah, man, they're on my trail. They just follow me wherever I go. And where I go is where the good shepherd leads me. So I can keep my eye on the good shepherd and I don't have to worry about things in my past or behind me because goodness has got it. And what goodness has got, he's got mercy right there beside his side that God's never given me what I deserve. Now that irritates my enemies, but oh, it blesses my heart and it blesses your heart that believes in the Lord. You that love one another, boy, that, it's a worthy question to ask. Who's following you? What do you live with? Many lives with grave tr troubles and torments that rises, and usually it is out of our past. You see, the question is a great question for those that are lost, and it should be asked by those that are saved. Hey, buddy, what's in your past? You know, uh, we, we might be a, a phrasing a question there that's worthy. You know, what's, what's in your past? What does your past hold? Is it anything like, you know, goodness of God? Is it any, has anything to do with mercy? You see, if Jesus was your shepherd, that's who would be right there in your past, who would be following you, who would be behind you as you follow Jesus. See, a lost man, boy, it's a dire question for him. He might realize real quick, boy, he didn't have those things. He might turn to Jesus. He might call on his name. He might ask the great shepherd to shepherd him and ask him to be led into the fold of God. You see, it's important to ask that question. You know, who is following you? See, we all have a... I appreciate everyone. Uh, yes, and uh, once again, I just want to highlight the fact of us... In this life, everything in our past, if we do not know Jesus, 
stays with us through eternity. And what we've experienced in this life will also stay with us through eternity in glory. That is, if you've experienced love, His grace, His mercy, if you have experienced the goodness of God, which would, who brought Jesus to us, who brought us His perfect life, that there could be a life of righteousness, a death on an old cross that substituted in our place, that the innocent could die for the guilty, a burial that put out everything that's defiled here in this world and in our lives away from us in the graveyard of graves, hell itself, and a resurrection that raised victorious from hell, that we can live raised in Jesus right now and walk on through this life into the marvelous glory of God. And that's exactly where we're headed. Yes, you see, uh, due to God's goodness, boy, we have love, mercy, and grace. And oh, I'm so thankful, so thankful to, that we have such a past. Because you see, in our past, we've come to know Jesus. That's all that matters. And all the rest of it then is put, put away, and we have the glory of God. Those that perish, on the other hand, just to highlight it some more, they perish with all their garbage. They have to go live with it in the garbage dump. They have to experience that ugly and all the hurt and pain and suffering, the harm and things that was done or that was caused through their neglect, through their omitting, or through the major evils that was practiced through life. It'll always be what's following them. It's right behind them. It's going to go right over and into the abyss of hell right with them. Yes, it's their past. Us, now we can attend to a future. And our future is very bright. After all, we have a shepherd in the head of our future. He's just right there always leading us through this life. And even in the valley of shadow of death, there ain't nothing from death that can touch us. But the truth is, it's a great question to ask. Who is following you? And church, for us, I must really be honest and say this. And sometimes... Uh, it may create a little doubt or confusion from some. But the honest truth, out of our past, we have a lot of things that some of us are never proud of, nor should be. Some evil things, and I don't mean just to dwell on all that's bad. But many of us have many things that we've lived through in this life and have experienced in this life. Yes, I've been through a divorce. I know what it is to be a sinner I've always tried to be honest with our church and tell you truly that I'm a sinner. But I can't say that without just giving thanks to God for Jesus Christ who is my Savior. And I, in that, though, it left a lot of my life that I'm sure that created hurt to others, uh, that done great damage and caused dis discomfort to others. And that I do regret. But the honest truth, I'm so thankful for my soul's sake because who followed me all the way through, even in what I was off to and all wrong, oh, I'm so happy, but grave mercy was there. God didn't give me what I'd have deserved. Instead, turned around and poured out his grace and an unmerited, undeserved love that I could never, ever have bought or paid for. But his only son did for me and did for you once and for all. That's why we're going to make it to heaven. Oh, it's all who's in front of us, but it's who he has behind us as well. Wherever you've traveled, whatever you've done, uh, you know, even what we've meant for evil, the scripture says, whatever we meant for evil, God meant it for good. And it ends up saving our soul. And boy, I'm just so thankful, and I know that's true. Much of my evil ended up through the guilt of it, the weight of God's hand, whatever it took, but it may have brought me to a confession and a realization of my own sinfulness that showed me that I had to be dependent upon the one person, Jesus Christ, who God sent into this world. His name is Jesus Christ. Now, church, I love you today, and I'm so thankful for each and every one. I do know, and I do believe we need, to, as we travel this world life, to be looking just ahead, you know, keep our eyes on the prize between now and there. Now the truth is, as we go through this life and through the years of this life, there's going to be those we get to meet. And boy, our joy should be to bring them the words of God concerning Jesus and what he's done for them. That they might have some other fellows following them instead of their own old wicked past. 
that they might have goodness, the goodness of God that brings Jesus and all the forgiveness of sin. Gives hope, love, joy, and peace to them. Oh yes, I pray that you'll join with me as we travel onward now. And know this, don't worry about our past because we got the two best back there. Goodness and mercy taking care of all that. We got Jesus right ahead of us. And we got a lost world that we need to invite to come with us. And to get in here and let's go because we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. And oh my goodness, what we got to look forward to. Everything that's just good. Everything that's totally right. Totally comfortable. Everything that can be described as the glory of God. Boy, it is what's ahead of us. Because it all is in the house of the Lord. I love you so much. May we bow for a word of prayer. Boy, our Father, we just come in your presence. And I'm just thanking you so much for each and every one. But above all, Lord, I must ask, Lord, if there's a soul that's hearing you that doesn't never come to you as your being their Savior, that today they might call on Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, save me. The very name of your essence, Lord, you shall save your people from their sins. Lord, I just pray today that, boy, you would just use this message to save anyone. Lord, use it in us then that we might share this message with others of what they could have following them all the days of their lives. That, Lord, the joys that we have could be theirs too and can be shared. That, Lord, we just live keeping our eyes on the prize. It's just right up the road that we'll be in your house forever and ever. And, Lord, there will be no more evils and uglies and hurts and viruses or nothing else. Lord, bless Pleasant View, bless our people, and Lord, continue to bless that testimony of your Son. We ask this all in the name of Jesus, for there is no other. Amen.